time to look at the opposite of derivatives and look at integration or antiderivatives. So we want to find the general solution to a differential equation. The antiderivative is the opposite of the derivative. Thus far, we start with the function f and say let's take its derivative and get f, little f. Now we're going to start with little f and we want to find capital F so that the derivative of capital F equals f of x. f is called the antiderivative of f. Interestingly, if f is one antiderivative of little f, then so is any function of the form g of x equal to the capital F of x plus c. You can add a constant to any correct antiderivative and have a correct alternative antiderivative. The logic for this is simple because when you're working backwards and you take the derivative of c, you get zero. The notation looks like this. It's a gigantic s sign, which actually stands for the limit of the sum. We have f of x dx. Now f of x is called the integrand. d of x is the variable of integration. The answer is capital F of x plus c, where c is called the constant of integration. One of the fundamental rules we're going to deal with has to do with the power rule, but if we quickly review the derivative power rule, you take the derivative of x of n dx, we take the exponent down in front and put an n, then we lower the exponent by 1. Now I want to look at the power rule. If you take the antiderivative of x to the n dx, you take the exponent and add 1 to it before we subtracted 1. Now we're adding 1, and instead of multiplying in front by it, we're going to divide by that exponent. Now notice if n equals negative 1, we have a problem because negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So we're going to exclude that one. That'll be a special case we'll look at later. So let's apply the power rule to the following. The antiderivative of x to the tenth dx. So what we're going to do is we add 1 to the exponent. It becomes 11 and divided by 11. Now notice we can add or subtract any constant. So we get in the habit of writing plus c after. As we look at this, the antiderivative of this, 1 over t cubed, but it's easier if we write it in the form t to the negative th third power first. So now, once again, if we add 1 to the exponent, we get t to the negative 2 divided by negative 2. And again, we add the constant of integration. Finally, if we look at the integral of the square root of x, once again, it's easier if we write this in exponential form. And again, we add 1 to 1 half becomes 3 halves, and divide that by 3 halves. In most situations with a fraction in the denominator, we can write it in this form, and we wind up with 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. Please notice, any time that you want to check an antiderivative, all you need to do is take the derivative of your answer, and you better get what you started with. Notice if you take the derivative of x to the 11th over 11, 11, the L goes out in front, the 11's cancel, you lower it by 1, x to the 10th. Here, if you take our answer, t to the negative 2, to take the derivative, you bring the negative 2 in front, and they cancel. If you subtract 1 from negative 2, you get negative 3, which is equivalent to this. And finally, if we take x to the 3 halves, if we bring the exponent out in front, 3 halves, they cancel, and you're left with x to the 1 half.